Welcome to Smyrna Christian Church, where the entire Word of God is taught straight from the Bible. Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church. Going to do another round of questions today. Always remember, you want to check out the Word for yourself. Don't take any man's Word for what they say. Check it out for yourself. Dig into the Word and let the Holy Spirit teach you. That's how you get the truth sealed in your mind so you will not be deceived. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your written word and for giving us this place we can teach your word. We ask you to guide us through this study with your Holy Spirit. We ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear to understand and teach your word. We ask that your words be spoken and your will be done during this study. Thank you and we love you, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, first question we have Dean from South Carolina. Do those that are on the bad side of the gulf come to the millennium? And also, do those that are on the good side come to the millennium, or do they wait until Judgment Day after the millennium? And okay, for, for those who don't know, he's speaking of um, Luke chapter 16 when he speaks of the gulf. And you see, everybody when they die, you either go to the good side or the bad side. If you overcame in the flesh, you believe on Jesus Christ, you pass the test, you go, you go to the good side where Abraham and Lazarus are and everyone else who loves God, and your soul is immortal. But if you don't pass the test, you go to the bad side, and now to answer your question, yes, those on the bad side, they will be in the millennium. And that's the whole point of the millennium, to give those who th they had a bad run in the flesh, they did not overcome, they, but in, the, in a spiritual body, because everyone will be in a spiritual body when the millennium happens. When does the millennium begin? It's when Jesus Christ returns, the true Christ. Everyone will be changed into a spiritual body. And yes, those on the wrong side of the gulf, they will be here. They will see Christ in person and they will have the opportunity during those thousand years to accept Jesus Christ. And then if the, when that final test at the end of the thousand years when Satan's released out of the pit, if they aren't deceived by him, they don't follow him, but they remain loyal to Jesus Christ, they will live forever. And you can read all about the thousand years, that teaching period in Revelation chapter 20. So don't worry. Maybe you have a loved one that they, they just didn't believe and they're dead and people are telling you, oh, yeah, they're burning in hell for all eternity. That's a lie. They will have the chance, so rest easy, have peace. They will have the chance in that thousand-year teaching period. And to answer the second part of your question, it says in Revelation chapter 19, verse 14, that when Jesus Christ returns, the armies in heaven will be following Him on white horses. So yes, those will be people that also come from the good side of the gulf to take place. And all God's elect all throughout time will be reunited at that time and God's elect will be priests and will reign with Jesus Christ through that thousand years. And you can read about that in Revelation chapter 20. Denise from Indiana. I wondered if you might have insight on Revelation chapter 13 verse 18. Now, I'm just going to read it. I'm going to read that verse right out of the Bible. Revelation chapter 13 verse 18. A lot of people want to make it something very complicated, but it's not. It's so simple. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18 says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. So that's 666. And it's so simple. What 666 means is that the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, they all teach you that the false Christ arrives first. They teach you that Satan will be on earth disguised as Christ. And that all happens before we are reunited with Jesus Christ. The sixth seal you can read in Revelation chapter 6. The sixth trumpet in Revelation chapter 9. And the sixth vial in Revelation chapter 16. So it truly is that simple. And you could go a little bit further into it. The, the, Greek letter in your, the Greek word in your Strong's Concordance is 5516 for the number 666. It's key G stigma. 
And check it out in your Strong's Concordance. It'll tell you that that's the 22nd Greek letter, the, the 14th Greek letter, and then an obsolete letter that is of 4472, but as a cross. Well, well, why is that important? Because Satan is going to claim to be that one that died on the cross and resurrected. He will claim to be the Messiah. Six trumpet, six seal, six vial, they all teach that. That's why his number is 666. And then some people get confused how it says that it's the number of a man. And many people think that the Antichrist is a flesh man, and we're going to talk even more about that. But no, that's not the case. It's a man, all right, but it's Satan himself, not a flesh man. Satan, that beautiful supernatural angel. And then, well, how can you document that? Isaiah chapter 14, Satan is called a man. When he's locked in that thousand year, when he's locked in the pit for that thousand years, people walk by and they say, is this the man that deceived the world? So yeah, it's a man, all right, but not a flesh man. Satan, that beautiful supernatural angel who will deceive the world by the miracles that he, were, that he will perform. So it's truly that simple. Uh, Don from Texas. And like I said, we're going to talk about that some more. Don from Texas asked, Revelation 13 tells us that the beast dies and is resurrected. Doesn't that mean the Antichrist is flesh? Well, you see, you're, in, you're uh, reading it all wrong. That's not what the Word says. You have to know that there are two beasts in Revelation chapter 13. One is the one world system. The, uh, that's the first beast. The second beast is Satan when he arrives on earth as the false Christ. And I already have it open to Revelation chapter 13. I'm just going to read a couple verses here. The first couple verses of Revelation 13 is the one world system that will rise up with ten kings. Revelation chapter 17 interprets all that for you. So that's the first beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. You see, that's the one world system that is healed. It's not a person. It's the system. Now verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Well, who is the dragon? Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. You also read it in Revelation 20. The dragon is Satan. It's just one of his names, one of his roles. So you see, when Satan appears as the false Christ, he heals the system. And that one world system is perfected. So they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, the one world system. They just fall in love with that system because it's world peace is what everyone thinks, but it's a problem because it's false peace by Satan. They worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Now, what's the blasphemy? Satan's claiming to be God. You can also read that in Isaiah 14, like I just mentioned. But now, like I said, then I'm going to go and I'm going to read a couple more verses in this same chapter. Skip down with me to verse 11. Now we're going to read the same thing, only from a different point of view. Now, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And I beheld an, another beast. This is Satan in his role as the false Christ. The first beast is the one world system. This is the beast, Satan, that will heal the system. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Why? Because he is the dragon. He is the devil. Two horns, that just means when Satan appears as the false Christ, horns symbolic of power. At that moment, he not only takes control of the political, he takes control of the religious by claiming to be the, claiming to be the Messiah. And like a lamb, because he claims to be the lamb, he claims to be Christ. Verse 12, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast, all the power of that one world system before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. When he comes claiming to be the Messiah, he perfects that system. If we were going to keep going, we would read about how he can even make fire come down from heaven and how he will deceive the world by the miracles that he will perform. 
So no, the Antichrist is not a flesh man. It's a man, but it's Satan, that beautiful supernatural angel who can perform miracles. And think about this, Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. First of all, Revelation chapter 12, verse 6 through the end of the chapter is all prophecy. It's all future, and that's so obvious. Just read it for yourself. But Revelation 12, 7 through 9, it says Satan and his fallen angels are going to be cast out onto this earth. That's future. Well, you think Satan's just going to be standing around just saying, oh yeah, worship somebody else. No, he wants to be worshipped. That's the whole point. He's not going to let somebody else play that role. Satan wants to be worshipped. That's exactly why he rebelled in the first earth age. So it is, the Antichrist is the devil himself. To think it's just some guy, you're going to be deceived so easily if you were to think it's just some man, some flesh man. No, he will perform miracles. It's the devil himself. Do not be deceived. Fawn, and we don't know where fawn's from. I showed somebody Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 20, and they said I took it out of context about God warning about flying to save our souls. They said read the whole chapter because it actually had to do with sorcery. Could you please explain that chapter when you get some time? Thanks. And you see, they are the ones that need to read the whole chapter. Ezekiel chapter 13, all about false prophets. If you ever want to know how to spot a false prophet, read Ezekiel 13. And it's saying how they prophesy out of their own heart and they speak lies. Now, there are a couple places it speaks about sorcery in that chapter. Verse 7, verse 9. Uh, in verse 6 and verse 23, the English word is a divine or divination. That has to do with sorcery, which means it has to do with magic. But that's not what verse 20 is talking about. The subject picks up leading up to verse 20 in verse 17. And it speaks about how they prophesy out of their own heart. It's about the lies that they speak. And you know what it says? It says that, that, that they, they, sew, uh, they sew pillows over armholes is how it reads in the English. But what that means, in the, it, you check it out in the Hebrew, it means they sew coverings over, over every knuckle of God's hands. And that means they just teach lies. You don't see that God's trying to save you from the deception by teaching the truth. And they teach lies. And I, I, I think I know why they were, even more so why they were saying that. I was looking at some other translations other than the King James. All false. And what, you know what it says in um, Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 18? It says that, um, it talks about that, what it says is that the false prophets, so they have magic charms on their own hands. That is not what the Hebrew says at all. You know what the Hebrew says? It says that they sew covering over God's hands. It says they sew covering over my hands. And that's made so obvious if you look at it in the Hebrew. The little letter Yod is at the end of the word. And that means my. Anytime you have that little, it looks like an apostrophe. If that's at the end of a word, it means my. And it's God speaking. So he says they sew coverings over my hands. But all those other translations, it says that they use magic charms on their own hands. And guess what? That's just been completely added. It doesn't say anything about magic charms in verse 18 or verse 20. It's been completely added and they had to do it on purpose. Because I'm no great Hebrew scholar by any means, but I know enough to know that it's saying that it has nothing to do with magic charms. It does not say that. So that's why they probably read these other translations like the NIV where the name Lucifer is even taken out of Isaiah 14 so you don't even know what it's talking about. And verse 20, like you said, it says that the false, what it truly says in the King James and the Hebrew, the false prophets hunt souls to make them fly. And you, take, you took it the exact right context. The false prophets teach rapture and that delivers you right into the false Christ's hands. There's no such thing as a rapture. That's a lie. But then the other translations, the false translation, they talk about ensnaring you like birds, which is not what the Word of God says at all. So no, you had it correct. It's about false prophets who teach rapture and they deliver their congregation right into Satan's hands. So don't be deceived. 
You don't let anyone ever try to take away from you what you know is true. And so you stick to the word of God. That's why you, you better be very careful what any man says, anybody, including me. You check it out for yourself. And you were correct. What you thought about that verse was correct. Don't let anyone take the truth away from you. Another question from Denise in Indiana. I wonder about Acts chapter 2, verse 17. If we are close to that time, or if we are close to that time period, or what your interpretation of it would be. And I have it written right here. I'm going to read Acts 2, 17. And what that says, It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now that is still future to us today. What's that talking about? You also can read about it in Mark 13, when God's elect will stand against the false Christ, and they will allow the Holy Spirit to speak through them. So of course that is future. And you, there's a lot of people out here today that say, um, I'm not saying here like this location, I'm just saying in the world, that they say God gave them some great dream. They say they had a vision. Well, guess what? They're liars. Jeremiah 23, beginning in about verse 25, it says there's a lot of people that say, I have dreamed or God told me this, God told me that. But they're a bunch of liars. Do not listen to people. Why do they say that? They want you to think that they're super close to God. They want you to think that they are something special. And many of them, I'm sure they've even convinced themselves that they've had some dream, some vision from God. But you see, just because you had a dream about maybe the end times, that doesn't mean it's a prophetic dream from God. Yeah, I've had dreams about the, the end times, but I've never had a vision from God. I've never had a dream from God. And I, I have no problem saying that because everything you need to know is written in the word. You don't do not listen to false prophets who say, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. They're liars. You stick to the word. But in that final time, when Satan is actually here on earth as the false Christ, yes, young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams. But that's future. And that has not happened yet. And the, the one world system gets set up first, like we've already talked about, before Satan appears as the false Christ. Has that happened? Of course not. So that is still future. But yes, when you, when you do stand against the false Christ, it says, don't even premeditate what you'll say in Mark 13. It's not you that speaks, but it's the Holy Spirit that speaks through you. And that will happen. So be prepared. That's your destiny as God's elect. One more question. Diane from Michigan. Regarding the two end time witnesses, I am confused as to whether they show at the, as to whether they show up at the beginning of the five month period or halfway through at the two and a half month mark. I firmly believe it will be halfway through at the two and a half month mark. How can I say that? First, Daniel chapter nine, verse twenty seven, when it speaks of Satan as the false Christ, says he'll make the covenant for the whole week. But it's in the middle of the week that he causes the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Of course, we no longer sacrifice animals because Jesus Christ paid the price for once and all on the cross. So what does that mean? It's in the middle that that's when it turns religious. That's when Satan appears as the false Christ and that's when he heals the deadly wound in the middle. And we already read Revelation chapter 13 verse 5 when Satan appears as the false Christ and heals that system, says he will continue for 42 months. That's the second half of the week. That's the second half of the seven years. But like you mentioned, the five month period, we know Mark 13, Revelation chapter 9, that the seven years has been shortened to five months. Like you, like you are saying, so the three and a half years shortened to two and a half months. So it's the second half that Satan will deceive, disguised as Christ, claiming to be Christ. And the two witnesses, Revelation chapter 11, verse 3, it says they will prophesy 1,260 days. So once again, that's three and a half years. That's the second half. The amount of time that Satan will actually be disguised as Christ, claiming to be Christ, it's that amount of time that the two witnesses will be here. And because solar months are, are a little bit longer than lunar months, the two witnesses will probably be here even a couple days before. But I firmly believe, because of everything I just said, that it will be in the middle, that middle of the week, 
That's when the two witnesses will appear. That's why you won't have to worry about what God wants you to do. You'll be getting prophecy from Moses and Elijah themselves here on earth. So you don't ever have to worry about, oh, I don't know if I'm going to know what to do. No, you know exactly what to do because it's all written in God's word. But also you will even be given more prophecy by the two witnesses at that time. And once again, we already talked about, you know what your destiny is. Stand against Satan, allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. And you know from Luke chapter 10 and Luke chapter 21, not one hair on your head will perish, but you are completely protected at that time. Praise God, let's go to His throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word and for all the prophecies you've given us, given us in your word. We thank you for this place you've given us. We can share your word and we just ask you to continue to give us understanding not just for ourselves, but so we can share with others. Thank you, and I thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, amen. This is recorded in the year 2021 at Smyrna Christian Church by Pastor Jesse Sisk. God bless.